Welcome to the results section on the Montana Early Warning System. In this lesson, we will show you a student summary report, how to read it, and what everything in the report means. If you have any questions or concerns about the Montana Early Warning System, please contact Eric Meredith at 406-444-3642 or email at emeredith at mt.gov. There are three reports available in the EWS, the school report, student summary report, and the student detail report. Each one is designed differently and for a specific purpose. The three reports are on separate web pages and with the EWS overview page, make up the EWS in GEMS. This lesson will focus on explaining the student summary report and what information is available in that report. The student summary report has been designed to allow educators to look at their student EWS results at once. The student summary report is a spreadsheet that contains most of the EWS data in the student detail report, only in a different format that allows the user to look at the EWS results for many students at once. An example report for 10 students is shown in this slide. The student summary report is sorted by grade and by dropout probability. Therefore, all 12th grade students appear at the top of the report, then 11th grade, and so on. Each grade is then sorted by dropout probability with the highest dropout probability at the top. In the student summary report is a column titled Change. It displays arrows of various colors and direction to graphically display if a change was found in the EWS result compared to the previous EWS result. The key shown above displays what each arrow represents. No arrow represents a change of less than one percentage point. The red straight up arrow represents the change in the dropout probability increasing by 5 percentage points or more. This means the student is likely to drop out now that they were previously. The yellow arrow designates a change between 1 and 5 percentage points in the direction they are pointing. The green down arrow represents a change in the dropout probability decreasing by 5 percentage points or more since the previous data upload. The down arrow means the student is less likely to drop out in the current data upload compared to the previous one. We will now log into the early warning system to show where the student summary report is and how the report works. Remember, you need a GEMS secure login and password along with access to the EWS in order to access the report. You also need data uploaded into the system to see the report. The good news here is even if you do not have uploaded data into the system for your school, chances are at least one student in your school was at a school in the past that uploaded data for that student. Any student that previously was in a school that uploaded data and is now enrolled in your school, you'll be able to see the results for. This is useful for schools that want to see what the reports are like and how the EWS works before they upload data for their entire school. Once you are logged in, go to Data and choose Student Characteristics. Click on the menu at the left edge of the page. Go to the Early Warning System and click on that. A list of the four pages available in the Early Warning System will come up. Click on the fourth one in the list, the Student Summary Report. For the school report, you must first select in the drop-down menu the school, district, or calendar of students you wish to view. Only the districts and schools you have access to will show up in the drop-down menu. Each calendar that has been entered into Infinite Campus at your schools will be available. This allows some schools to look at only certain students, such as students enrolled in an alternative high school. You may also select more than one school, district, or calendar. After selecting the subset of students you want to see the report on, click on the View Report button. Before we get into all the data aspects of the report, first we need to cover report dashboards and its capabilities. This is the area just below the drop-down menu. At the far left is the ability to move to the other pages of the report. This feature is needed in the student summary report since this report is usually more than one page long. The important parts to know about the dashboard is it allows you to save or print the report. If you click on the disk icon, there are several different formats that the report can be saved as. For this report, it's recommended you use the Excel or CSV format. Once the file is saved, it can be shared with colleagues through secure email or other ways. Once this report is downloaded and saved, it can be sorted by any of the columns listed. Sorting can be a useful tool to use here. For example, if you want to identify all students that have attendance as a risk factor, then the file can be sorted to show that. 
You can also sort the file by attendance odds to determine the students that have the highest odds for dropping out due to attendance. Remember to save it in a secure location as this report does have student level data. To print the report, click on the printer icon. The first five columns in the student summary report contain information to identify the student and the school. These include the school code, SC, school name, student last name, student first name, and student state ID. The next column, high school years, designate how many years the student has been in high school, if it applies to the student. Remember, the EWS model that is applied to high school students depends on this variable. The next column is the grade the student is currently in. The student summary report is sorted by this first, so generally all 12th grade students are listed first, depending on the age of the students you have access to in the EWS. The rest of the student summary report displays the EWS data. This data is the same as the student detail report, only displayed in a different format. After the student identifying data is the dropout probability, which is the percentage chance of the student dropping out before graduation. The next column displays the change arrow if a significant change has occurred in the dropout probability since the last EWS results. The designation of the arrows was explained earlier. The next column is the estimated column. This column displays an asterisk for any student that is missing data used in the EWS model. The asterisk is put there because this student dropout probability is an estimate because of the missing data. Remember, missing data is replaced with a statewide average for each variable. The next seven columns display the risk factors. Each column is a separate risk factor, with the factor actually shown if it is a factor for that particular student. The risk factors are displayed in this manner, so that if you save the student's summary report, you can sort the students by risk factor in the file. This makes it easy to identify all the students that are flagged for the factor you are interested in. The next column, Previous Probability, is where the student summary report differs significantly from the student detail report. Here, the only previous dropout probability is displayed compared to the previous 12 of them being displayed in the student detail report. The last four columns of this report, Behavior Odds, Attendance Odds, Grades Odds, and Mobility Odds, are the risk factor values. If the risk factor is above 1.25, then the student is flagged for that risk factor. The interpretation for a student that has a grades risk factor of 2.28 can be stated as the following. Based on grades alone, the odds of this student dropping out is 2.28 times the odds of an average student with all the other factors held constant. These risk factors can get very large, numbering into the thousands. The larger the number, the more of a factor this area is for the student. This report can be sorted by any of the risk factor columns. That concludes this lesson on the student summary report detail report in the EWS and wraps up the series on making sense of your results. This slide shows the remaining lesson, how to use the EWS results, is next.